everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and today I'm doing another reading new book of the month books uh, video. The theme of this video or the point of this video is to keep up with my book of the month books. I'm a new book of the month member as of the beginning of this year and I know how easily the books can just stack up if I don't make them a priority to read right away. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And actually this last month I picked a book of the month and then I added on two books. So I got shipped a total of three books. And so I definitely wanna make sure to get all of these read ASAP so that they're not just sitting on my shelves for months or years um, before I actually get to them. So let's talk about the books that I picked this month. So the main book of the month pick or the main book of the month book that I picked this month is not gonna be a surprise to anyone, is definitely, I think, the most popular book out of all of the selections, and that is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Uh, the only other Emily Henry book I've read is Beach Read. I just recently read that, and I really liked it. I gave it four stars. I'm interested to see how this compares to that. I'm not hearing that this is as emotional and hard-hitting as that one is. I think this is gonna be a little bit lighter, so I'm a little nervous for that because I typically enjoy more hard-hitting and emotional romances. I don't really like the light and fluffy, um, but I already know how many people are going to be talking about this uh, now that it's coming out. And so to be honest, I just kind of want to be in the know. And then my first add-on was also an April selection. So again, um, if you're not familiar with the way Book of the Month works, they pick five books every month for you to pick from. Uh, you can pick one of those to be sent to you. It's $14.99 a month, or if you're joining for the first time, you can usually get a code that gets it down to like $9.99 for your first month. Um, but either way, they're always new release hardcover books, and so $14.99 is a really good deal for a hardcover book if you're excited about it and if you enjoy it. Um, and then the add-ons are $9.99, so again, even better deal. So the first book that I added on was another April selection, so I could have chosen this as my main book, but I chose What Comes After by Joanne Tompkins, and I have heard nothing about this. This is the one out of these three that I'm the most, uh, I wouldn't say nervous about, but I just have no idea if other people like this book or if I'm gonna like it. But the synopsis sounded really interesting to me. It sounds like it's a little bit more of a slower mystery type book about this uh, like woodsy mountain town, some people going missing, some people popping out out of the woods. Uh, and I don't know if I wanna look too much into the actual plot, but I think that it looks intriguing to me and like something that I could really uh, connect with. And I'm excited to read this one because again, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. So I feel like it's also good to be reading books that I'm not just reading for the hype. And I'm reading because they sound intriguing to me. The premise sounds like something I will actually enjoy. I would like to make those a priority too. But then the third book that I got is another add-on. And this was a book of the month uh, several months ago. I can't remember exactly what month. It might actually tell me. Yeah, it was an August 2020 original pick. Um, but I was able to add it on to April and it is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Emezi. And this originally didn't sound that intriguing to me, but because of people's reviews of this book, I knew I had to pick it up. It sounds sad and emotional and hard-hitting and impactful and amazing. Um, all I really know about it is that it's about obviously the death of this man, Vivek Oji. Um, we know from the title and the very beginning that he dies, but I guess we don't know the circumstances around his death. And I think that's kind of what we're finding out. This book is really, really short looking at it, like less than 250 pages. So I'm excited that this is gonna be probably a little bit of a quicker read and hopefully have a harder punch because of that. So these are the three books that I will be reading for this video, different genres completely than what I was reading in my first video in this series. But hopefully at least one of these is intriguing to you and you're looking to hear my thoughts so that you know, uh, you know, whether you should pick up your book that you got for book of the month or potentially add it on as an add on in future months or just pick it up from the normal bookstore. You don't have to get these books through book of the month. But with that, I will go ahead and get started. Uh, not sure what book I'm going to pick up first, but I will let you know when I have an update with some of my thoughts. Before 
before I get to reading, I actually have a lot of room to do in this room behind me. Uh, this used to be my office. You might recognize the yellow wall and the bookshelves in the background from past videos. Uh, but since getting a new job last year, I am not working from home anymore. And so I don't really need an office here. Um, and then with second baby on the way, we are going to need another bedroom in our house. So the plan is we took the office out of here. We made this a playroom for now, uh, but it's going to become my one year old's bedroom when the baby comes. But I still have my bookshelves in here um, and they're planning to stay here. But I have a lot of books that I need to put away. I also have a lot of her toys that I need to put away. So I thought I would capture that real quick, uh, put some of the real life stuff in here that I have to take care of before I can always uh, get to my hobbies, which are reading. So while the baby's down for a nap, let's go ahead, let's do a quick clean up and then start reading. As you can see, I am at capacity in my regular bookshelves. So I took out all of my book of the month books and put them out here um, so that when I get more, I can just fill up this bookshelf and not fill up that one. But I'm gonna have to figure out a plan for that bookshelf. Um, I've actually been toying with the idea of doing a massive unhaul and basically unhauling anything that's not four or five stars. Um, that I've already read. And the idea behind that just being that I would love as my book collection grows for it to be full of books that are actually my absolute favorites. Um, and that, you know, someone could go into my office, go over to my bookshelves, pull off a book and know that it's a book that I love and would recommend. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. Let me know if any of you guys organize your books that way if you only keep favorites. I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna have to do because I don't necessarily want walls and walls of books if I don't love them. So that's gonna be a project for another time. For right now I got everything that I need to fit to fit, but I am now full so no more book shopping for me until I get some more of those books read and figure out a plan for how I want to narrow down my collection. But I am tired now, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna do some reading. Update because I just finished The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Mezi, and I'm a little bit speechless to be honest. Um, I mean, I just finished it a couple minutes ago, and I think it's gonna take me a little while to fully dig into how I feel about it. Um, and I think it'll be telling uh, how much this book sticks with me and resonates with me. He is a boy um, who dies and um, we are basically following all of the events that happen before that, like his whole life before that, and then uh, some of the aftermath and just finding out what happened to him and finding and reading about all of the other characters finding about what happened to him and uh, it took me actually quite a while to read this book. I think I started it like eight days ago or something like that. And it's only like 245 pages long. So that's a lot longer of a time to read that many pages 
than it usually takes me to read, uh, you know, books that are longer. And I'm not sure if that helped or hindered my enjoyment of the book. It's definitely not a book that you quote unquote enjoy in the first place. Uh, there's a lot of really dark and hard hitting subject matter in here. Um, definitely trigger warnings for um, homophobia, transphobia, uh, incest is a thing in this book. Um, <laughs> I've never read anything like it. And in some ways it reminded me, um, the writing style reminded me of The Mothers by Britt Bennett because it does a lot of jumping around uh, in perspectives and in timelines and it doesn't really have a plot and like it doesn't go linearly. Um, so it is a little hard or it was a little hard for me to know like where it was going and kind of what the point was um, for a lot of it. But then I think by the end you're realizing there was no point necessarily. It was just, uh, you know, sharing this story about this kid and all of the injustices uh, that he's gone through and that a lot of people go through. And so I think I'm grappling with the fact that this book for me was more of an educational experience and more of like an enlightenment experience uh, more than it was an enjoyment experience. And so trying to figure out how to rate that is really difficult and probably begs the question of should it even be rated in the first place. Um, at this immediate point in time, I'm thinking four stars because it's undeniable that it is an impactful book and people should read it. Um, but for some reason, for me, uh, wasn't five stars in terms of, like I've seen other reviews of people who say that they bawled their eyes out reading this book. And so it didn't hit me in that emotional way, but it definitely impacted me in, again, that like, educational, enlightening uh, sort of way. So I'm appreciative for that. And so, yeah, this is a very, very interesting little book that I would definitely, again, highly recommend people read, especially if those are themes um, that you have not read before. I am hoping that the other two books for this vlog read faster, and I think they will because I don't think the other two books that I've chosen are meant to be quite as emotionally impactful, but I had picked this one to read first because I thought it was going to be a really fast and easy read, but <laughs> it really wasn't. So we'll see what the other two have in store, but um, yeah, I'll also keep you updated in case anything else comes to mind uh, in terms of reviewing this book, but I am glad that I picked it up and I'm glad that I read it and again for how slow and seemingly unenjoyable my reading experience was, um, it did pay off. Hopefully that's uh, insightful in some way, but I don't know. I'll be back when um, I have some more updates. Uh, other things going on in my life. I just finished actually my last full week of work um, before my maternity leave starts, so it was a pretty important and big week. Um, but it's over now. Hoping this weekend I can get a lot of house stuff done. Um, I actually just did uh, a big book on haul um, and I filmed it and that will either be going up right before or right after this video. Depends how quickly I read the other books on <laughs> this <laughs> for this vlog. But um, I need to figure out what I'm doing with all of those books. I've already texted a couple of my friends to see if they want any of them and if they do, I'll give them to them, but then I'm assuming there will be uh, some books left over, so I need to figure out if I want to try bring them to uh, like a used bookstore or a little free library in my neighborhood. But either way, I should be doing that this weekend, so I can take you along for that if that's interesting. Um, yeah, and otherwise it should be a pretty low-key weekend. It's supposed to be rainy, so hopefully lots of nice, cozy reading weather.
have started my second book for this video. Uh, I started What Comes After by Joanne Tompkins and thought I'd check in because I am 180 pages in. It's a little bit longer of a book. It's about 420 pages long, so I'm just coming up on the halfway point. To be honest, I'm not sure what I was expecting going into this. Um, I know I picked it because the synopsis sounded interesting, so it's about these two or it's about this town where two teenage boys have turned up dead they were friends and we're following one of those boys dads and then we're also following this teenage girl who has some sort of connection some sort of connection to those two boys um, but we're not really sure what and it's definitely a slower type book definitely like a slow burn mystery a lot of you know small town dynamics and uh, rumors kind of circulating about the families uh, but ultimately we're trying to figure out what happened to these two boys and so far I'm getting actually pretty similar vibes to uh, The Boy from the Woods by Harlan Coben which is another slower burn mystery um, and that was about I don't remember exactly what it was about but I know it had uh, this element of this man who lived in the woods for like several years and then finally came out um came out from the woods and people were kind of trying to figure out what had happened to him uh it's kind of similar because this is set in the pacific northwest and so there's a lot of woodsy vibes um outdoorsy people are hiding and showing up in the woods and things like that so i so far wouldn't say that i'm like loving it because it is slower paced it's a little bit you know, slower and harder to get through. So I'm not like racing to finish it, but uh, I'm still interested at this point, hoping that it culminates into something interesting and exciting at the end, but we will see. Um, I'm trying to finish this actually tonight. So it's gonna be a night full of reading and then hopefully I can get to the third book, uh, People We Meet on Vacation tomorrow and also read that in one day. That's the plan. So I'm gonna stop talking about it, but I did wanna give kind of a midway update before I get all the way to the end of this book and have to explain the whole thing once I finished. But I'm going to get back to reading now and I will be back at some point, whether that's once I finish this book or once I have something else uh, interesting that I would like to say about it. morning guys good and bad news uh good news is i am on track with my reading schedule i had made for myself uh and i have finished what comes after i finished it last night uh bad news is this book really disappointed me and it's not because i was expecting it to be some twisty turny fast-paced thriller i had really come to terms that it was you know a very slow burn character-based mystery uh, my problem I had is that I didn't really think it was a mystery at all. Uh, we didn't get much more information by the end of the book that we didn't have at the beginning. And so it left me a little confused about um, the point of some of some of this book and why, I don't know, why it was kind of made out to be like a mystery if there was nothing being revealed. Um, and it ended up that like a side plot of the book ended up being... The main part of the book and I kind of wish it would have just leaned completely into that and made that the book you know what I mean and I guess to go a little bit more into specifics what I mean by that um, I don't know if I would even really consider the spoilers but I will put like a little minor spoilers thing at the bottom here until I'm done talking about things that some people might consider spoilers but like I had said this book was about um, these two teenage boys who who turned up dead in this town um, and we learned at the very beginning that there was a suicide note written by one of them who said that he was killing himself after having murdered the other one. So we know that from the very beginning. Um, we do get more you know details about what happened but 
there was really nothing revealed that changed that original premise. So I felt a little underwhelmed by that. And then I mentioned this other girl that we're following who was kind of connected to these two boys. Um, she is pregnant throughout the story. And actually the most interesting part I thought of the whole book was following her through her pregnancy. As a mom, as someone who is currently actually pregnant, um, I always really enjoy reading about people going through, you know, pregnancy symptoms and uh, just kind of the roller coaster that comes with being pregnant. And I did really enjoy that part of the book. So that's what I mean when I say I wish that, you know, was more of the focus of the book because that was interesting to me and her really figuring out what she was gonna do um for this baby and because she's struggling with a lot of other things but yeah overall disappointing a lot of things weren't wrapped up or I thought just I at the end I was like why was that even a part of the book because I didn't say anything or do anything at the end to really make it pay off so unfortunately I'm kind of grappling between a two and three stars, probably a two star uh, for that book, just because I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really recommend it to other people, which is a bummer. Um, and it's extremely disappointing because the point of me making these videos, or my intention kind of, was to try and find more underrated book of the month books. Um, I was hoping that, you know, this service would expose me to books that I would not have picked up otherwise, and that I could recommend that you weren't hearing about a bunch of other places but so far that hasn't been the case all of the books that I didn't know anything about uh that I'm reading for these videos have been really disappointing so that's that's a bummer um and I realize that some people or a lot of people use book of the month just to get those hyped popular books that they're probably going to pick up anyway uh, because I understand that at you know $15 a month to get the book is still a deal. You're still getting, you know, a brand new hardcover book for cheaper than you can get it just in a bookstore. But I was hoping that it would expose me to some new underrated favorites. But it's not. But uh, that's okay. <laughs> we will. But at least I'm learning, I guess. And so that brings me to slightly, hopefully, happier uh, topics. Uh, I'm about 50 pages into People We Meet on Vacation. I just started this morning. And... I think that this is probably definitely the most hyped uh, popular book that people are really interested in and excited to hear other people's thoughts on. So I'm excited to read it right away. This is a romance book and if I didn't already say in this video, um, I'm typically pretty picky when it comes to romance. I really only like emotional, more hard-hitting romances or those are the ones that I really gravitate towards and end up really enjoying. Um, I typically don't resonate as much with like the light, fluffy, uh, just fun romances. I like there to be a little bit more grit <laughs> to them. I don't know. Uh, so we'll see what this is. Emily Henry's previous romance, Beach Read, uh, did end up having those, you know, more hard, more hard hitting topics in them. So I actually really liked that one. So I'm hoping that she does kind of the same thing here where it has this light and fun premise, but some more hard hitting issues at the core. Uh, we will see. I will let you know. I'm only 50 pages into it, like I said, so still learning who these characters are and kind of getting the setup for the story, but I will definitely be back with an update on how I'm enjoying it, kind of through that lens as someone who likes more adult and hard-hitting issues and topics to be discussed within a romance. So that is the plan. Hoping to finish this book today just to chug through the whole entire thing so hopefully I succeed and hopefully I have uh, a really good update when I have finished this book. Okay you guys ending this video on a good note because I really liked People We Meet on Vacation. Uh, full disclosure I did lean in pretty heavily to the fun uh, lightheartedness of this book. It is about these two best friends who go on vacation every summer together and end up, you know, falling in love. And so I was expecting it to have a heavy emphasis on all the places they're going and, you know, things they're doing, people they're meeting, things like that, um, which is really fun to read about, especially, obviously, in this time we're in where a lot of people have not traveled recently, myself included, it was kind of nice to have this as escapism and to kind of go on these vacations 
vicariously through these characters. Um, so I let myself kind of let go of my previous notions about, you know, I need romances to be a certain thing um, and just let myself have fun with it. And so I did. Uh, I think I'm going to go with four stars for it. There's still something holding me back a little bit because it wasn't close to, you know, making me cry. I don't feel like I, you know, would die for these characters or anything like that. Uh, but I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed the book. I fully endorse it as this year's, you know, summer read. Everyone's kind of go-to summer romance, I think. A lot of people will really enjoy this, just like Beach Read, her previous uh, romance. I think it'll also get a similar reception as The Unhoneymooners uh, by Christina Lauren, which I didn't love that book. And I'm thinking it's possible or probable that I like the friends to lovers trope more than the enemies to lovers one. Uh, I think it just lends itself to uh, the characters knowing each other better and you know their uh, their histories a little bit more things like that and so I think that's probably why I enjoyed this uh, more than that one but I'm sure that people who did like the Unhoneymooners will also probably like this one so I'm glad that I enjoyed it so to wrap up this video as a whole uh, didn't quite go as I was expecting but happy to say I had two four star reads so people who mean on vacation and the death of Vivek OG two very different books but positive outcomes for both and then uh, what comes after unfortunately was a dud for me but I am I am glad to at least have read these three books and to be you know still caught up on my book of the month subscription and the books that I'm getting uh, I'm happy that I'm reading them as I'm getting them so I can stay on top of that book of the month TBR so with that I don't have anything else uh, thank you so much for watching this video let me know if you have book of the month and if you have enjoyed your reads that you've been getting lately and otherwise I will see you in my next video.